welcome back this is sandy with sandy's organized chaos and today we're going to be doing this really neat looking halloween peekaboo swirl tumbler as always i'll make sure to put everything that i use today down into the description box below so that way you guys can shop these items if you would like to if you're new to my channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more tutorials vlogs tips products all kinds of stuff i have coming your way so let's wake up prep those tumblers and slay all day. Let's do this. For this project today, I'm starting out with a 30 ounce skinny tumbler that I purchased through the Stainless Depot company. Now, after I prepped my tumbler, I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint it this harvest grape color. I think it goes really well with the glitters that I'm using today. And it comes out pretty light once it's wet, but once it's dry, it turns this beautiful shade of purple. Now the glitter that I'm gonna be using today is this purple and blue mix, chunky mix, and that is kind of like a semi-opal glitter, so that's why I'm using the base, the color base today to make sure that that color really stands out. Now the epoxy that I'm using today is Illumilite's Amazing Plus. The plus just means that it gives you a little bit of extra UV stability so that way it doesn't turn, the epoxy doesn't turn yellow over time. Now I know you guys have seen me do this before. It's one of my favorite methods to do when I know I'm going to be doing a full coat of the same glitter onto my tumbler. So I'm going to go ahead and add my glitter right to my epoxy and I'm going to apply my glitter that way. Now when I do apply it this way, I make sure that I go from about the top of the tumbler all the way down and I do about three of those big dollops of epoxy all over my tumbler. And then I just kind of take each, each section and just kind of smudge it around until it's nice and kind of even on my tumbler. And for those of you that um, have never seen me do this method before, I'm just basically ensuring that I can pretty much move on to my next step after this has cured. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my glitter epoxy mixture. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my turner. I'm gonna heat it up really good with my blowtorch here, making sure to pop any of those micro bubbles. Then since I'm not using my quick set, I'm gonna let this cure overnight because I did this the night before. So I'm gonna let that sit overnight and then we'll barely move on to that next step. Now the decal that I am using, I will make sure that I put where I got it down in the description box below because you guys had a lot of questions about this because you guys seen it in my vlog from the other week. So I wanted to go ahead <laughs> and in this tutorial, I wanted to make sure that you guys actually had the link and everything for it. But I'm just going to make it into four different sections because I don't want it as big. You guys can obviously do these as big as you would like. I'm going to do in four sections because I want them a little bit smaller. I'm going to go ahead and attach them all together and then I'm going to make that file or that cut big enough to fit the entire mat, my entire mat when I go to cut. And I get this question a lot too, what do I put my Cricut on when I go to cut? So I'm going to choose my mat section, my mat selection because I want to cut it on my mat. And then I'm just going to come into uh, my selections over here. I'm just going to browse and I'm going to pick vinyl. And then I'm going to go down to the very, very bottom of that selection. There's so many to choose from and it does really well at predicting at how deep that blade needs to go. But I'm just going to choose vinyl for this because it's just a basic vinyl. Now the reason why I like to do an entire sheet of this is just so the way I can save the rest for later. One whole sheet could very well do up three tumblers if you do it this way. Now here is my tumbler the next day. As you can see, it's nice and smooth and it is ready to have my peekaboo decals applied. Now when I'm doing a peekaboo swirl, I actually like to start with the bottom first. What I'll do is I'll take about an inch height of my stencil that I'm using because I'm working with a 30 ounce tumbler, so I'm gonna use about an inch height for that. I'm gonna go ahead and place that onto my bottom and that's gonna make it a lot easier when we go to do those swirls around the main base. The first thing that I like to do is I just like to kind of look at it and figure out which way I want my swirls to go. And we want to make sure that they both go in the same direction. So we're just going to kind of look at it and kind of get an idea of where these stencils are going to start out. Now, as you see here, I'm not taking very much of each piece of my stencil. That's because I like to kind of be in control of how much I want to go on my tumbler. So pretty much we're just going to start off at one end of where our bottom decal ended we're going to just connect it right on through and then each little segment that we add on 
to our tumbler where it's going to shift it over just a little bit so that way it starts to make that swirl around the side i want you guys to keep in mind that it's not going to be perfect and that's exactly what you want you want it to not be perfect it's supposed to look a little distressed so this is how mine is turning out so far and you can always go through and add just a little bit more off to each side if you would like to just kind of give it just a little bit more of a distressed look and kind of add just a little bit more of those details out into the main glitter part so now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to do the opposite side of my swirl so as you guys see, I flipped my tumbler completely over and we're going to be working off that opposite side of that little stripe that we did on the bottom. And again, I'm just going to take a little piece of my decals here and I'm just going to get that started for myself. And after I get this down or I, uh, I apply it to my tumbler here, I'm going to kind of show you guys that it should be about the equal distance from the one that is on the front as well. So I'm just going to kind of flip it and show you guys. You just want to make sure that you kind of keep that same gap as you start to go. So all I'm going to do is do the same exact thing. I'm just going to take little pieces, little sections of my skull uh, leopard print here and just kind of off center it from each time that I lay it down and just keep that momentum going straight up my tumbler until my swirl is done. And like I talked about earlier, I said that you guys could add extra little pieces around, just kind of give it a little bit more, and that's what I was doing there. Now that I am done with my swirl look, we're gonna move outside to spray painting. This is very simple. I'm just gonna start with a black. It doesn't matter if it's gloss. It does not matter. I'm just letting you guys know, okay? I, I tell you guys all the time, it's all good. So I'm gonna start off with my black, and I'm not gonna do the entire tumbler, which will help us out a lot when we go to remove some of this paint for the distressing look around the edges. So I'm just gonna do right around my uh, swirl decals that I did. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gap there still because we don't need it fully filled in. So I'm gonna go ahead and everybody's atmosphere is a little bit different. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry for about five minutes. Now I'm going to apply this brilliant gold. And obviously you guys can do any type of color combination you want. There's no right or wrong when it comes to making art. However you guys feel it should look, it should look that way. I'm just kind of giving you guys inspiration with this. So I went ahead and applied my gold. I let that dry for five minutes, then black over top one more time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry for about an hour because you don't want this tacky at all when we move on to this next part. All right, now let's move on to the fun stuff. This is what makes this tumbler the way it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my 100% acetone. As you guys know, I just purchased mine for the dollar store or I buy it from Walmart. The Onyx brand from the Walmart works really well too. You just want it to be 100%. You don't need any little smells or oils in it. Just regular old 100% acetone nail polish remover. That's all you need. And of course I have my paper towels, which I want to take, and I'm actually gonna ball it up this time. I know on my last video, I, I made sure that I had it in my finger really well, but we were doing something different then. <laughs> this time you just wanna ball it up, and you wanna make sure you soak it down really well with that nail polish remover, and then you just wanna make sure that you swipe it really good to kinda remove away all that paint that is right in between your swirls. And with this, I actually want to keep wiping until I get a little bit past my decals. I want to remove that paint so that way some of those decals are actually just kind of out in the open and a little bit more exposed. And as always, anytime you're doing any type of distress type look on a tumbler, it's going to look smudgy, it's going to look weird, but that's okay because we're going to come through and clean it up really good once we are done. But as you can see here, I have some of my decals that are kind of out in the open there, and that's exactly what you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the rest of the sides and do the same exact thing where I just kind of wipe away and make sure I get almost right up against where my decals start exposing just a little bit of those decals here and there and this is what i have so far so i'm just going to continue on doing the other side the same exact way and of course another tip i would like to give you guys before i forget is to make sure that you keep flipping your paper towel around to expose the cleaner side it just makes it a lot easier as you go 
Now here in a minute after I get done doing all this, I am actually going to show you guys a couple different ways you can end off your tumbler. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys, I'll, I'll be your guinea pig. I, I did it for you. <laughs> I did it where I just removed the leopard. I did it where I just removed the skulls. And then, of course, you guys see where I do it all. Uh, all the decals are removed. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what that looks like as well. Okay, I have my bottom all finished up. I have my sides all finished up. Now I'm just going to come through with my 99% rubbing alcohol and I'm just going to further kind of give it a distressed look. I'm going to clean up my gold off to the sides. I'm going to distress that black just a little bit more, kind of rubbing through to that gold just a little bit, just to give it just a little bit more of that spooky, faded, distressed look. And of course, for all my new tumbler makers out there my new tumbler artist the acetone is going to remove the paint very quickly it removes a big amount of uh, your paint right off your tumbler but your rubbing alcohol is just going to remove a very tiny amount of your paints off your tumbler so it all depends on the kind of look that you're going after as to which type you like to use i typically use both so that's again what i'm using here now after I am done kind of giving it this little extra distressed look, I'm going to come back through with my acetone, my 100% acetone one more time on my exposed glitter portion and I'm going to clean that up really well and that's going to be it for it because you want to remove any of that haze that might be on that glitter because you don't want that. You want it nice and sparkly. So I'm going to come back through with that 100% acetone just on the purple portion, just on the glitter part, clean it up really good and then we'll be ready to start taking off our decals. Okay, like I said, I'm your guinea pig. I'm gonna do it for you. So this is what it looks like if you just wanna keep it as it is. It looks really cool like that too. It kinda looks like that suede look that everybody does with their decals. So you could leave it like that. But I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we remove just the leopard and just the skulls. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with that for you guys. All right, so if you're wondering, I wonder what it would look like with just the, the leopard spots. This is what it would look like with just the leopard spots removed. And here on the reverse side is what it would look like with just the skulls removed. So now you guys can kind of make up your mind. Do you wanna leave it on? Do you wanna just remove one portion? It's completely up to you guys. But you guys already know, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with that. But for those of you that have never done a peekaboo, I'm just taking my X-Acto knife and I'm just simply peeling off all of my decals. And it's very simple to remove because we're using a non-permanent vinyl, so they come off very easily. And you get to have it all over your fingers when you're done. See, very, very fancy. <laughs> so easy, I know you guys got this. Now, if you guys wanted to add a quote or a name or anything like that to it, you want to make sure you give it another coating of epoxy. Go ahead and apply that and then finish it up with your last two finishing coats of epoxy and they are good to go. Whether you take this and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.